Exactly. And uh, one as analyzing the team preview, that's well, that's going to weigh very, very heavily on Jesse's side. Exactly. And one thing I do want to point out, that Brilla Boom is getting so much value here. That's a way he can cleanse out that electric terrain. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. Jesse has no possible way to clear this sun other than waiting yes. it out. Yes. And you see that the Crydon has clear amulet, so land... Uh, the Incineroar is Intimidate, it's not going to do anything to that here. And we see the leads here, T Tornadus and Coridon, and Incineroar and Muridon. Now, here, uh, in a Tailwind situation, uh, it's actually pretty advantageous to just take the KO on the Tornadus early if possible. Stall a couple turns and then come in with the, Mir the Whimsicott to establish train control that, or speed control that way, uh, and try to win. So we'll see how this turn plays out here. Exactly. They are going to be logging in right here, logging in the move. Let's see how it goes. Incineroar doing fake out pressure on Coridon, hey, losing goes. that attack. That one does get set up, though. And now Miraidon going to be the last to move here, but it's probably going to be the most lethal. Now, it's actually pretty interesting here that the uh, Brayden actually left the Coridon completely exposed here, just calling out, yeah, you're not going to click Draco into it. Of course, if... if he actually did click Draco Meteor into the Coridon. The game probably would have just been over right there, right? You have a Miraidon and you don't have a Coridon anymore. Like, what do you do? But, you know, Brayden, knowing that the Coridon has Protect and knowing that the Tornadus is a much more appetizing uh, target for the Bolt Switch in general, just, you know, said, okay, well, uh, See, you you have to fake out into this Coridon, or I'm just gonna I'm gonna get a huge hit off. So it doesn't even terrestrialize or try to protect the uh, Coridon in any way, uh, and actually leaves uh, room to protect on this turn, and brings in the Champ Pow, threatening even more damage from this Coridon that's in Tailwind and Sword boosted. Yeah, and now this Coridon. That Intimidate's going to get a lot of value here. He's going to be down. Sure, he has the bonus from the sun. But he's not going to be as big of a threat as he could have been. And now, the Wimps got on the field. They're going to get a Tailwind set up of their own. Things are going to flip on their head. Yeah, so Jesse chooses to uh, set up Tailwind right here. Now, Jesse is a very seasoned, of <coughs> excellent uh, Tailwind just offense player in general. I'm very impressed uh, by his performances in this season. And he knows, like, if you stagger Tailwinds in this way, last turn, Brayden went for Tailwind. This turn, Jesse goes for Tailwind, is going to actually end up in a situation uh, down the line where he gets one free turn of having Tailwind, whereas Brayden will not. And uh, even, you know, take some damage here, but it's going to be OK. Uh, if, unless the Coridon double targets this Whimsicott, there's even more potential for Jesse to come back and switch out this Whimsicott and switch it back in to get the Tailwind. But Raiden just says, hey, I'm not letting you have that. You're just going to have that one free turn of Tailwind, and that's going to be it. Yeah, that's going to be the end all be all right there. Coridon taking a little bit of damage. The U turn doing decent damage on the Chen Pao as well. Importantly, that breaks the sash too. You know, Chen Pao is like surprisingly difficult to remove from the field. Uh, it has a focus sash. It has you know potential of icicle crash, which is uh, depending on the set. It has a uh, sucker punch. It can protect. It, this Pokemon, despite being very frail, is <laughs> very difficult to get rid of. So being able to get an attack off with U-turn just like chuck it down a little bit, uh, put it in range of another attack, very advantageous, even gets an Intimidate off on it. So, you know, if Maridon uh, hypothetically um, may or may not be able to take this uh, uh, ice, ice Spinner, depending on how it's been trained. Exactly. Could take it, but it's a big risk. He wants to try and take this one out, but with the fake out pressure, he's gonna be able to prolong this a little bit longer. It's oh, he's also doing a swap out. Right? Like, the Incineroar just came in against two Pokemon that's going to protect. Uh, what ends up happening a lot of times is that both player or players in the situation just choose to double protect two Pokemon, which can be taken advantage of. But this time around, Jesse simply just goes for the fake out, lets the spray graph come in, right? And this is actually very key here. That's very, rather intelligent because with the Champ House switching out, right, uh, it, that collision course was no longer a KO on this Maridon. It had the Champ House stayed in, of course, that Coridon would have just taken the fake out and no damage would have been dealt, period. 
Yeah, no damage would have been dealt, but now the Shambo back out, lowering the defense. He wants to try and get this Ice Spinner off on the Miraidon. Now, the U-turn being covered, it could take out this Gen Pao. What's really tempting to go for in, in situation for Jesse is to simply double target this Jam Pao. Of course, this Jam Pao is starting to KO on both Pokemon here. Uh, Ice move being super effective against both. But the key thing is that Jam Pao is a single target attacker. So uh, it can either just, it can choose to KO one, but if both Pokemon target it uh, by attacking here, uh, it's going to leave itself exposed to the other attacker and get knocked out as the previous uh, in turns previous the Champau lost his focus sash and seeing that the writing's on the wall for this Champau this Champau doesn't have much time left on in this game uh, Brayden chooses to go for uh, terrestrialization on the fridge draft uh, potentially trying to sweep with this uh, through the combination of Trick Room and Hyper Voice yeah, he's putting it all in on this free ref, but it's going to be tough to break through a Landorus and... But the Hyper Voice, single target, Terrasalize, let's see how much it does. It's been not enough to take it out. But if it can get one more move in here, it could very well potentially turn this match on its head. It's getting it down to the wire now. Attack balls doesn't matter, it's a special attacker. But there's so much pressure here. It's going to take so much damage it before it can bit, get one wild. It is a bit unrealistic to expect this Burger app to take out both Pokemon, especially seeing this Incineroar is Assault Vest C, and meaning that it's not going to take as much damage from uh, the Hyper Voice as like a traditional Incineroar would. And not only that, but this Flare Blitz is Sun boosted and gets the KO through a double, uh, double attack into it and giving Jesse uh, an early lead in this best of three. Yeah, brilliant play, and that is going to be one going over to Jesse Romolo. Yeah, uh, excellently navigated by Jesse. You know, Jesse is, I consider him to be one of the strongest Tailwind players uh, just in general. So he really navigated this uh, quote unquote Tailwind mirror. Uh, very nicely let Brayden set up the tailwind early and then just said hey I'm gonna you know sit back a little bit let you do your thing a little bit uh, let you wear yourself out and then I'm going to be the one that's gonna end up on top at the very end and that's the that's what matters right it's not what you do in the early game or the mid game it's it's who's left standing at the very end and Jesse uh, very much had that in mind when he planned out the approach to this matchup yeah one thing I do want to try and think about here is did Brennan did not bring the Relu boom did he no actually, which is that's actually very surprising the yeah. only thing that would counter it out is the instant roar with flare blitz but that's you can deal with that with other mons as well I think it would be a very strong pick going into game two yeah that is definitely something that I expected uh, Brayden to bring and uh, perhaps uh, got a little uh, worked out the matchups in his head and he went a little too deep uh, in his analysis and uh, ended up in a situation where he chose to not bring Rillaboom, uh, but, you know, going into game two, probably wants that back, right? Exactly, yeah, with the wood terror, or the wood, the ground terror type and the high horsepower. Along with Fake Up Pressure, I think it would be a very strong pick, especially into Miraidon. Any of these picks, really, it would be very strong into. Even the Ogre Pawn. The only thing it would have trouble with is that Incineroar. Everything else it has an answer to. Everything else is either just normally effective or not very effective at all. Another thing to keep in mind too is that Ogre Pond does resist electric and knows follow me. Although it's not going to take a Draco Meteor very well, of course, or even an electric drift. Depending on how it's trained, it might just get knocked out anyways. But the key thing is that it protects one of your Pokemon. Uh, you can Volt Switch uh, and Jesse could Volt Switch and Ogre Pond could just follow me and take it and most likely survive. Uh, and leaving Jesse wide open to an attack from Coridon, for example. Exactly, yeah, Coridon. Very powerful, but I feel like it just didn't get the performance it needed there. It didn't get the setup it wanted. The Intimidate to start, I think I would rather have that back in there to address the Incineroar first, potentially. Just because you don't want that little lowering of attack because you need everything you can get unless you want to commit to the swords dance to try and counteract that it's a smart move pick there but it's 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 tough 
Yeah, another thing to keep in mind too, right? Uh, Jesse won that first game by uh, tailwinding after Brayden. Uh, Brayden might just take the take a page out of Jesse's book and just turn it against him, right? Like he can exactly. choose to not go for the Tornadus lead and just put it in the back, uh, actually lead the real boom, right? We saw in the previous rounds that uh, and indeed he always just came out uh, leading directly into Miraidon, knowing that the real boom is actually slower than the Miraidon is always going to have the terrain control when you lead it in that manner. So I think going into game two, these are the kinds of interactions that Brandon should be uh, thinking about uh, and you know hopefully uh, can go take it he can take it to a game three exactly it'll be interesting to see a little game of chicken there with the tailwinds yeah, there know, is a saying, who's gonna use it first chicken, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're just debating each other out yeah but it's look always tricky it's uh, even though this is not a mirror in tradition traditional sense because you highlighted yeah there's a lot of analogous pieces here mm -hmm. it is uh, in a way like a pseudo mirror right mm -hmm. you know similar pieces torn uh torn and whimsica for on both sides crydon rillaboom <laughs> Incineroar, Ogre Pond, and Ogre Pond, right? Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, you squint your eyes a little bit and you can, like, maybe see it as actually, like, a pseudo mirror. And it's very interesting to see that dynamic play out. And, you know, uh, yeah, it could definitely go either way, right? Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I do want to consider, though, is this Ogre Pond Cornerstone is probably very strong into the Karate. Oh, actually, that's Collision Course. Never mind. Well, I was going to say. Uh, Ogre Pond does have sturdy, so another key point about this version of the Ogre Pond is that by having sturdy like this, you guarantee an attack. And if Karidon, uh is forced to. Uh, fire Terra, for example, then the Ivy Cudgel is going to come in and take that knockout, and that's that's something that uh, maybe Brayden has to be worried about a little bit there. Exactly, and we ha we didn't see Landorus that time, did we? So oh, we saw the Landorus at the very end. It got the, oh, the end, yes. on the fur draft here. Yeah, but we didn't see it in full force. I think that could also be a strong lead, you know, putting a lot of pressure in some areas. You having yes. that sludge Landorus. bomb as well, trying mm -hmm. to get the early poison. Traditionally, a very strong pick into Rillaboom, uh, being able to just threaten it with a sludge bomb. You know, generally speaking, like Landorus is a Pokemon that's good into the so-called a uh, jungle trio of like Urshifu, Incineroar, Rillaboom, that kind of thing. The Incineroar gets KO'd by uh, Earth Power, uh, the Rillaboom gets threatened by Sludge Bomb. So, you know, when you think of this in a more conventional sense, you know, like a Landorus could be, uh, again, Jesse chose it because he thinks that it's a good, good into this matchup, of course, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. And we're going to throw it to a quick break just because the players are ha we're just having a little bit of a tech issue. So we'll be right back after we have everything set up once again. We'll be right back to finish the set. We'll see you very soon.
everybody, we are back after just fixing some wires and need plugging in, you know, a little bit of a reset. But now the excitement is tantamount, it's palpable, it's all here. This could be the end of the set, but we're gonna be going into game two. Yeah, make or break situation for Braden here. He needs to win this next game or else he's eliminated from this tournament. And we see the leads come out from both players. We have Karaidon Feridra wow. versus Incineroar Miraidon. Now, this is potentially a very volatile situation for both players here. Who knows which Pokemon uh, between the Miraidon and Karaidon uh, is faster. You know, uh, both Pokemon are naturally uh, speed tying each other, so it'll all come down to which one is just trained to be faster. And not only that, but the Fragraph is there just to say, hey, this Karaidon, uh, completely uncontested. That Incineroar, completely useless. Exactly, and now it can also threaten the Trick Room too if it is trained to be a little bit slower yes. on purpose. There's a lot it can do here. You know, oh. Jesse, uh, not perhaps just goes for it. Let's see who wins the speed time. It is the Cold wow. of course, coming first and into the Maridon. Let's see, and it they knocks it out. it out. An incredible start for Brayden here, just taking out the Maridon, the biggest threat on Jesse's team without even taking any damage from that Maridon. He just got it for for nothing, basically. Just a little bit of U-turnship and certainly uh, something that Brayden's happy with, I'm sure. Yeah, there's nothing more massive, especially in this regulation, than instantly taking out your opponent's restricted Pokemon before it even can get a move off. Sure, it set the electric terrain, but otherwise did not get any value here. Now, the Whimsicott and Landorus comes in here. Uh, the two Pokemon that are in the back for Jesse, and he is threatening the ability to Tailwind. He is threatening the ability to just uh, Moonblast the Crydon, who's four times weak to uh, Barry, uh, and, but actually just, most likely just attacking Flare Blitz into the Landers just calls that Jesse's not gonna tailwind with the Ferrograph on the field who's just ready to click Trick Room, right? Jesse uh, chose not to click Tailwind because he was maybe afraid that if he went for Tailwind and attack into Crydon or Tailwind into Protect that uh, it's gonna be an easy, uh, opportunity for Brayden to just uh, protect the Crydon, take no damage from it basically, and just set up Trick Room and it'll just be curtains. But now, Jesse left with two support Pokemon on the field is not, uh, this is not looking good for uh, Jesse here. We may be seeing a game three. Yeah, it's oh, looking hey, like yeah, a game yeah, three. Just, just, a, well, just end it quickly, you know, attack your own Pokemon and uh, you know, you might just want to uh, concede right away, sure, but uh, the way, the reason why you might consider just playing it out even though this game is completely lost is just giving yourself a little bit more time to think about it. And actually, Brayden reveals that he brought the Rillaboom. Uh, you know, if Brayden had just like stayed in uh, and kept attacking, uh, he could have ended up in a situation where Brayden, he didn't have to reveal the uh, Rillaboom adjustment. Uh, and actually just goes for a Terra, maybe uh, testing some damage calcs here at this point. Yeah, potentially. It's any information is good information for both of these players. And one thing I need to mention is they played in the Swiss match. This oh, exact really? same matchup. Okay. Jesse won game one, Britom won game two, and then ultimately Jesse we'll won game three. For your Pete's then, as an exciting game three now. Just going for the, okay, uh, well, we, yeah, <laughs> yep, the self-attack uh, and just ending it quickly here. Uh, Jesse has already conceded that after losing both your offensive pieces in Maridon and Landris and being left with only support Pokemon that can barely deal damage, uh, just sees a writing on the wall uh, and gracefully accepts the beat, uh, moving on to game three. Yeah, and there it is. There's the concede from Jesse, and now we are going to be what going. What an explosive, explosive game two here. An explosive and volatile set in general. Exactly. We're going to be going over to game three. Absolutely explosive from both players, and these players have played each other now there's going so on the sixth time. There's so much mind games, right? Yeah, you could definitely tell that there's a lot going on here, a lot of moving parts, and now this is it. No more tricks left in the pocket, so you're going to use everything you have going into this next game. Absolutely. Now, we saw all of uh, Jesse's Pokemon brings here. Uh, uh, opted to bring the two offensive pieces in Maridon and Landorus with 
Whimsicott, and Cinero. I believe these are the four Pokemon that Jesse originally uh, used in game one. Uh, and we saw, we didn't get to see uh, Brayden's fourth Pokemon here, but we did get to see the Rillaboom. And we saw that this Rillaboom didn't come into play this game one. So we'll see the full extent of what uh, Brayden did to try to adjust this his game plan into Jesse. I think the Frigraph was a pretty good call out, right? Uh, if both players went for the uh, Tailwind mode uh, and one player brings the Frigraph, uh, that's like a pretty advantageous position, always threatening the Trick Room uh, and saying, hey, you can Tailwind if you want, but I can just, uh, I can flip the tables quite literally uh, right on, uh, you know, I don't, I don't care if you set up Tailwind if I can set up Trick Room. And we see the same lead again from Brayden with uh, Whimsicott and Miraidon again. So no longer risking that speed tie. Jesse said, enough is enough. I'm just going to lead Tailwind and uh, go, f just potentially just go for the Draco Meteor. Exactly, you just kind of want to take one out, but it looks like he's going to dial in on this Frigoraph. Try and take out the support mon before it can go through. This yeah. is a neat play here, actually, going for the Bolt Switch into the Bolt Switch into the Frigoraph and going for a Tailwind at the same time. You know that if you set up Tailwind, that it's no longer, uh, this Maraidon is no longer going to be hit by this Krydon, and the Krydon actually protects, so this is... Oh, it looks like it's going to go very well for Jesse, provided that this Volt Switch actually KOs this Spurgeraf. And we know this Terra Electric Volt Switch, did you know, Matthias, wow. that it gets the knockout? Yeah. yeah. Did you know that this Volt Switch from Maraidon, the Terra Electric, is stronger than Dynamax? Uh, Max Lightning from Reggie Alecki <laughs> in Sword and Shield. Oh, that is absolutely nuts. And you get the switch you out the ability switch as out, well. You know, you can be slippery and uh, defend yourself at the same time. And look at that. Jesse has Tailwind. The Fred Draft's threat of Trick Room is gone. The can attack with both Pokemon. Not only that, but the Whimsicott can actually threaten the knockout onto this Crydon that you used to protect that last turn. And not only that, but that Landorus can cover for the potential defensive Terra on this Crydon, right? This Crydon yes. is Terra, fa Terra Fire. You know, you want to Terra Fire to stop yourself from getting knocked out by the Moonblast, but then the Earth Power is going to come in and knock it out. And you don't, you don't want to lose your Restricted like that without taking any damage. We saw that happen to Jesse uh, in game two, and we saw how that plays out. And he switches to the Rillaboom, but now Grassy Surge is going to be the one last up. Now the Samuridon can cover that one up. Rillaboom, sure, he's going to have some pickup pressure, but he's going to be taken down to a little over half HP in that first turn. Good switch from Brayden, just say, hey, like this is such a free and easy play for you to make, Jesse. I know you're just going to double tap into the Crydon uh, slot, because why not, right? It covers for anything that Crydon could do, unless it switches out into the Rillaboom and takes it. But, you know, the downside of this is two Pokemon, two physical attackers that are now weak to Intimidate. And not only that, but this Rillaboom sets up ter terrain and uh, is going to, well, it's already in place, so the Mirana can come in, establish the terrain control. You know, things are looking quite well for Jesse right now. It's looking very good for Jesse. Right in. Turn super effective against both Pokemon, sort of ruin boosted uh, on the real boom slot, and, you know, suns up Pokemon. Both Pokemon are weak to fire. Like this Incineroar, you usually see this as a very, I don't know, like a support Pokemon, right? You don't see it as a thing that could deal, deal damage, but actually this real boom, or this Incineroar right now is actually dealing, is threatening so much pressure on both of these Pokemon. Yeah, there's so much pressure from that Incineroar. It is the most used Pokemon out of most of this yeah, weekend. We have reason, some of the right? data on that. You know, Wolf Click thinks that Incineroar is just the best Pokemon in the game, and who's to, uh, who's to doubt Wolf Click, right? Now, exactly. <laughs> it's now at this point with Jesse being up so far ahead, right? Like, uh, Tailwind's up, Speed Control's up, both Pokemon intimidated, low health. Uh, he still needs to be careful, right? There are always ways to mess up the end game, uh, and just make sure that you know. Be careful. Think through your last turns uh, carefully. Make sure you cross your T's and dot your I's, kind of thing. And the Rillaboom actually commits the ground terror, hoping to just snipe that 
Incineroar with a ground move. Yeah, the wind's caught use protect. Hopefully there was no attacks pivoted that way. Now, Chen Pao also going to use protect. Very defensive turn Favorite happening here. Slot Incineroar targeted. It's the U-turn into the Chen Pao. This really is looking like a real boom attack into the Incineroar. I believe this is going to pick up the knockout with the same type attack bonus and sort of. It <gasps> does not. Wow. The Talon Peter's out, but. But the Whimsicott's in, so he can just reset it. Brilliant gameplay from Jesse and living on a prayer as this Incineroar and Whimsicott are on their last legs here. However, this does. This is a little bit of a precarious situation here. Uh, the Rillaboom is ground type, so it's you can't just clear clear uh, Brayden's field with a discharge. You start, you have to hit a Draco Meteor into that Rillaboom to knock it out, and you probably have to hit a Draco Meteor to knock out that. He went for an attacking move. Sucker punch. Attacking move. Sucker punch takes out the Wimp Scott. Brennan might be able to turn this around here. Rillaboom? No, it is not. It's going to be. It is going to be a Miraidon versus. Two Pokemon that can threaten an Oko and Rhydon can't clear the board with Discharge. It's forced to go into Draco Meteor, right? And wow. It, this is, oh, it has Terrastalize, so it is no longer weak to the Ice Spinner. Wow. However, this is going to be tough to claw back from. Exactly. You're going to just have to rely on Maridon's speed here to try and take out as many as There's you can. One yep. move that you can click as Jesse. Yep. Brayden, going for the sucker punch. sucker punch. Getting that consistent damage before it may go down. So had Brayden actually swapped out uh, this real boom here and uh, sacrificed uh, the Coridon, as uh, an intuitive that, that may seem, uh, if Coridon goes down, right, the real boom comes back in, uh, also sets uh, resets up the terrain, uh, can also fake out uncontested into this choice specs locked. Um, right on to get free attacks onto it with this champ house. So we'll, now this is looking a, a little dicier here. If this, uh, if Jesse is correctly able to call which slot uh, potentially goes for a protect or just wins the speed tie, or uh, this this could still go in Jesse's favor. But you no, know, two v one. It's very easy to see who has the advantage here. Yeah, going for a sucker punch once again. But the Coridon moves first. Wow! The collision course is set, and it crashes into the Maridon, and a critical hit to end it all. Oh. Brayden Rabatel comes out on top after losing in Swiss to Jesse Romolo. Very impressive set of adjustments from Brayden, and impressively played endgame there. That early game looked rather grim for uh, Brayden, right? I, I very much thought that uh, Jesse had the advantage in the early game, but Brayden was able to get the the right calls uh, to, you know, take the game. Even when you're down, right? We've, we've seen a lot of comebacks today, actually. We, exactly. Right? The, the key thing uh, when playing this game is that, you know, you realize the position you are in and you start, you start going for riskier plays to try to claw your way back. Jesse may have been a little too passive, may have been too, uh, may have been a little too, uh, yeah, just passive going into, uh, you know, just double attacking that uh, Coridon slot with the uh, Moonblast and Earth Power. Surely that covers everything that Coridon can do if it stays in, but you know, that's an if, if it mm -hmm. stays in. And in fact, it just switched into the Rillaboom and the Rillaboom took that really, really well. Yeah, and one thing, I feel like if that Tailwind was committed, Sucker Punch would have gone out. Like, that was the pivot point for that whole yes. game for Brayden, fortunately. That's he tried true. to go That's for true. that. That was also a very good call, right? You know, the obvious play, just click Tailwind and and, and pray, right? But Brayden just finds that one opportunity. He said, if I get this off, I win the game. Yeah. I'm going to stake the entire game on this play, and he got it right. Exactly, and that's what those gambits pay off for. And there's going to be more gambits, more riskier plays, and more amazing matches on display today as we move towards the semifinals. But before that happens, we're going to look at some stats, actually. Oh, okay. So just to go run through them, we're going to run through the usage statistics of the past few days of this MSS. 
series. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so on Friday, Incineroar had 50%. Raging Bolt had 50% 50 as well. Urshifu Rapid Strike, 50%. 50 and we Those... know what the favorites are. At... <laughs> exactly. Okay. And then we had Amoongus at 49.9% or 42.9%. Calyrex at 35. Pelipper at 35. Chiyu at 28. Fragraph at 28. Ursulina Blood Moon at 28.6. Whimsicott at 28.6 percent as well so those are the main heavy like, hitters uh, really important thing here right see that first six pokemon these are very standard pokemon that go on to be ice rider uh, compositions uh, the ones that uh popularized um you know, did very well uh, at indianapolis regionals piloted by justin burns to a top four finish uh and you know that's a very popular team in the format right now it's just six uh six excellent pokemon you know uh just advantage through the sheer quality of your Pokemon, right? And not only that, but they work pretty decently well together. You know, we got uh, Raging Bolt uh, and Ice Rider giving that classic and famed Bolt Beam coverage. We have uh, an Amoongus to redirect um, moves to get a safe uh, Trick Room up with Ice Rider and afterwards threaten Spore in Trick Room as Amoongus is a very slow Pokemon. We also have an Incineroar that can use Fake Out to trick and, and support uh, Calyrex uh, Trick Room. And so, you know. Yeah, there's so much on those teams, but we'll save a few of the following days and the trend for the next couple of breaks. So we're going to send it over to a quick break and we'll be right back with more Pokemon action. 